members of the Corbin family, Superintendent McIntyre, Principal Banark, Mr. Pierre Gustavo, Mr. McGilvery, members of the school committee, honored guests, and the student athletes of Milf of the student athletes of the Milford High School class of 2017. Good evening, and welcome to the seventh annual Dick Corbin Senior Athletic Awards Ceremony, sponsored by the Milford High School Boosters Club. We gather here tonight in the evening at an event fitting, <clears throat> fittingly named in honor of Coach Dick Corbin to celebrate the team and individual achievements of our senior athletes as they cap off their Milford High School athletic careers. Gentlemen, I would now like to take this opportunity to thank the Corbin family, Mrs. Corbin, Debbie, Melinda, and Chrissy for their continued support of our student athletes, the Boosters Club, in this event. Please let me take just a moment to introduce the officers of the Milford High School Boosters Club that are with me tonight. Vice President Chris Lynch. <laughs> Treasurer Joanne Dillon. <laughs> Secretary Gina Tommaso. Thank you. <clears throat> I knew Coach Corbin for many years. I went to school with his daughters, and I graduated from Milford High with Melinda. Although I never had the opportunity to play for Coach Corbin, he had left to go coach at Harvard before my freshman year, I did have what I think was the next best experience. As a young kid, I used to ride my bike up to the high school to watch double sessions in the summer. It was, a, it was great watching the older kids. You were hoping that someday you were going to be there. It was during one of the practices that Coach Corbin walked over to me and asked if I'd be interested in helping out Peter Falosa in doing odds and ends, errands, running practice bags around to help all the coaches, one of them being Nikki Zakili, who's here tonight. <clears throat> then on sad days, he said I'd be able to stand on the sidelines during the varsity games. What a thrill. What a thrill. It was during this time that I was able to see firsthand how prepared he was, not only, but, not only for games, but for practices. I remember him being intense, compassionate, and someone who was hard but fair. It was an experience that I never forgot. He made me want to be a Scarlet Hawk. Now as I look at you, our, our senior athletes, it seems like just yesterday we were coaching you guys and gals in the youth sports programs of Milford. Football, baseball, basketball, softball, lacrosse, soccer. You saw all the pitches here tonight. Thank you for the memories. I can still remember most of you running all around uh, Rosenfeld Park on a Friday night or at the concession stand begging for Mo for a free ice cream. Those were fun days. It reminds me of a story, <clears throat> it seemed like every sad day, you'd see Tony Mobilia, Anthony Akuti, Ryan Tommaso, and Blake Tadpole Hill running across the street going frog and tadpole hunting. And I just remember that one day, they would, they would run into the concession stand, dump out all the bubble gum out of the, out of the tub, take it to go collect their fish, frogs, or whatever. They were crossing the street, and there he is, Tony Mobilia, walking into the concession stand, holding a frog that had to be 
two feet long. Hey, Mo, can we cook this up? <laughs> Tony, I'm telling you, if she was fast enough and could catch you, you wouldn't be here right now. But it's all good stuff. But look at you now. You have grown into these fine, young, respectful men and women. <clears throat> Over the past four years, some of you have been involved with teams that have competed for league titles, district titles, even state titles. You've been honored for your hard work by being recognized with MIAA awards, named to league all-star teams, newspaper all-star teams, even setting school records. But what is as equally important is the academic and community involvement side of you as athletes. You would put, you've pushed yourself in the classroom, been involved in such organizations as peer mentoring, best buddies, student council, and inductions into the National Honor Society. Ladies and gentlemen, that is very impressive. When you have been an athlete your entire life, from grade school to high school, athletics becomes second nature. And by the time you reach your senior year, Sports are, every, sports are a part of your everyday life. You train, you lift, you run, you work on skills and practice, all to be ready for your upcoming season. It becomes a part of your, every, it becomes a part of your daily activities. You take for granted the amount of time and effort you actually put into it, but in the end, you are a better person for it. Athletics at Milford High School has hopefully taught you many valuable lessons. These are lessons that are going to help you make decisions down the road in your life. Believe me, I use them every day. Remember, don't ever forget where you came from. And once a Scarlet Hawk, always a Scarlet Hawk. So congratulations and enjoy this evening. This night is all about you. Thank you. I would now like to introduce Peter Boucher, Milford High School Athletic Director, for his welcoming remarks. So before we get started, um, just want to give you the quick disclaimer. I'm going to use a little unique terminology which I usually do. <laughs> the athletes, uh, student athletes will definitely get it. The coaches will get it. I think a lot of the parents will get it after three years of, uh, again, unique terminology. And I'm going to ask you to applaud a couple times tonight because um, I think it's important. I think what Mr. Arcudi, President Ar Arcudi said tonight is really important. We're here for these folks right here who, you know, I think a lot of times we talk about four years. The way I look at it, it's probably more like 12 or 13. They've worked their entire careers to get here tonight. So we want to make sure that we honor you for all of the hard work that you've put in. So good evening and welcome to the seventh annual Dick Corbin Senior Awards Night where we are striving to honor the foundational characteristics that Coach Corbin helped instill in Scarlet Hawk Nation many years ago as a legendary coach and athletic director. These expectations for success, which we have summarized into three core values, number one, relentless pursuit of excellence, number two, championship sportsmanship, and number three, Scarlet Hawk 24-7, 365, our driving force for the life lessons that are learned in the trenches of our practices and games which are held on our courts, fields, mats, track, course, pits, ice, pool, turf, and gymnasiums. And I think I covered everything. I did my best to try and encapsulate that. I am proud to be an adopted member of Scarlet Hawk Nation and I consider it a distinct privilege to welcome you this evening. Let me start with the fact that I love the manner in which this community supports and expects Excellence. It's not like that everywhere else, okay? Supporting and expecting are, are difficult things. And I've been, as I've said a million times, I've been in two other districts and, and nobody does it like Milford. This community appreciates, expects, and most importantly, supports excellence. We would not be here tonight without an overwhelming amount of support. And right now, before I move on, I'd like to acknowledge a few individuals and groups, and I apologize if I forget anybody. Um, President Arcuni did a great job 
mentioning a group of people, so I apologize if I am echoing any of that. But if Carla Tuttle would stand up right now, the lights are pretty bright, but I don't, I'm not sure what, there she is. Here we go. Um, Carla has been absolutely amazing and, and just instrumental in putting this night together. Um, she puts up with my difficult schedule, all of the, you know, crazy boosters and fun people that we have, and she just makes it work, and I, I mean crazy in a very good way. Um, it's a fun group. I love hanging out with them and meeting with them. Um, I certainly want to thank our booster executive board. I want to thank all the boosters. I genuinely do look forward to those Wednesday night meetings. I give you my update. We chit-chat usually bust me a little bit, and then we move on and we get stuff done. So I really appreciate that. I do want to very quickly thank this guy, though, because he, he is leaving us for a little while. He's not leaving us for good, but he's retiring. I think we owe him a big round of applause. Mr. Uh, Joe Arcudi, please. <laughs> We've mentioned the Corbin family. I want to thank them. I knew Mr. Corbin when he was the athletic director in Sharon. He was absolutely brilliant. And I have to tell you, if you were having a conversation with him, or you were writing a proposal for the league, you had to have your stuff together because if you didn't, he let you know it. And I, I appreciated that. He taught me a lot by that. So um, we appreciate you folks coming every night. It's important to us. <laughs> a lot of our central admin had to be at town meeting tonight, but I want to thank them. I want to thank our guidance staff, especially Mr. Bayonne and Sue Shadroni for helping get this evening set up. I want to thank the Milford High School administration, which is right up here, our two assistant principals, and absolutely Ms. Carrie Banach for all of her support. She doesn't miss anything. I've never seen anybody attend any events, but all athletic events the way she has. So for that, we thank you. Much appreciated. We have a bunch of school committee members here, and I can tell you, again, after 25 years in the business, we have an excellent school committee that expects and supports excellence. So we appreciate all of their hard work. I want to thank the, your teachers on a day-to-day -day basis. I want to thank our Milford High School youth and Stacy Middle coaches for all that they do. Trainer John is at the back. I think we owe him a round of applause. We know what it's like when he's not around when he got injured. I'm pretty sure Mr. Folster is still here. He's just, you can call him anytime, day or night, answer your technology questions, make sure everything's ready to go. So we appreciate that. And I just want to thank, um, he'll be speaking later on tonight, but Mr. Nick Sakili, he's always a phone call away from me. He's a living legend in my mind, and I just want to thank him for his almost 30 years as an AD coach and all the things he did here. So thank you, Nick. <laughs> Very quickly before I move on, I was asked to summarize some of our successes this year. Now, I understand the fall is still continuing. I won't predict, but I will talk a little bit about, I'm sorry, the spring is still continuing. I got the looks from everybody. The spring is still continuing. For me, it's 365, right? Um, so I'll very quickly summarize. If I have forgotten anything, I apologize. If I omit, I apologize. Uh, we'll start with the fall. Football, six and five. MIA playoffs, to my knowledge, three Thanksgiving Day wins in a row, which is huge. That's, diffi you know, that's difficult all in, all in of itself. Um, we have a number of, of folks moving on to play football, which we're super proud of. Girls volleyball made the MIA tourney, had a great winning record, made it to the semifinal round. Again, as Joe Arcudi mentioned, some of the intangibles, not necessarily the records, but they were awarded the one and only MIA Sportsmanship Team Award in the fall for volleyball, and we felt really good about that. Along with winning, they, were, they, went, they went off the court too, so. <laughs> Golf team was on the verge of a league title right up to the very last match. It was thrilling, and I know it it's, might not seem thrilling to watch golf, but I love watching those guys play. Uh, we had the distinct pleasure of having the, the Hockamock League MVP and Ryan Tommaso, I can tell you, in 25 years in this league. That's very, very rare, so we were super excited about that. I will tell you that the boys cross country team won the Hockamock League title the last time they did that. I think was the year you all were born, which was awesome to see. And our cheer team were regional and state champions this year, so we were super excited about that continued success. So that was our fall. In the winter, all nine teams made the tournament in some way, shape, or form for track. They made it individually for swimming. We made it individually as well, but I'll quickly cover that. Boys basketball made the MIA tourney. Most of you were up in Marlboro for that game. Unbelievable. Went on to the second round of the playoffs. 
Girls basketball made the MIA tourney, first round of the playoffs. Boys and girls indoor track, multiple school records broken, 12, over 12, I believe. Many individual league champions, MIA qualifiers, and MIAA All-State qualifiers. Hockey made the playoffs this year. Cheer were Hawk champs and state qualifiers. Girls swim, MIA sectional and state qualifiers. Boys swim, MIA sectional and state qualifiers. And I do have to spotlight uh, Captain Nick Antonellis. He won the Hockamock League in two events, was the league MVP, which is incredibly difficult in the Hockamock League, which many consider to be the best league in New England these days. Um, won the D2 state championship and is obviously going to go on and swim in college. So, um, oh, I have to add, sorry, I didn't have this in my notes, Nick, but he is um, one of 10 males who uh, was selected as a student of the month. 20 of those are given out, 10 male, 10 female, out of almost, I think it's 375,000 student athletes, 352 high schools in Massachusetts, and Nick got one of those awards, one of 10. So how about a round of applause for that? I think you deserve that. Pretty impressive. Wrestling, many sectional and state qualifiers. Captain Ryan Gray won the Hockamock League. He won the sectionals. He won the D2 state championship. Um, went on to place at New England's and was a two-year MIAA adv advisory board member. Again, they have 16 of those kids out of the 352 uh, high schools in the, in, I almost said the United States, in Massachusetts. And he's been on that for two years. And for a state championship, we owe him a round of applause, believe me. Boys Volleyball just qualified. They won their last three matches against three incredibly difficult teams. Many of you were here Friday night. Um, unbelievable fashion. We'll find out tomorrow who they're playing. Boys and girls track, multiple uh, school records, many MIA qualifiers. Uh, definitely want to mention one Mr. Cam Clark, very quiet, but also won two Hockamock League events this year as a senior. Congratulations, Cam. Baseball does have a couple of games to go. They've qualified for the MIA tourney already. Although he's not a senior, I do feel compelled to mention uh, junior Aiden Wild. He won the South Section Home Run Contest. And the reason I mention it, um, it is for a, a uh, community fundraiser. It's for the Jimmy Fund. And he's going to get to hit at Fenway Park on June 3rd. And you folks will be able to go watch him hit. So congratulations to him and baseball. And I do want Coach DeVito to uh, correct me if I'm wrong. We've won five Hockamock League titles in a row, correct, since we've come into the league. Uh, unbelievable streak, qualified for the MI tournament. Um, we lost the first game of the season and have won every single one of them since. And I think if we played them again today, tonight at midnight, whatever, I think we'd beat them. Uh, I wouldn't say hands down, but I think we would beat them. Uh, and we are currently ranked number one in the Division I South um, Let's see what happens. I'm excited for the postseason for that team as well. So congratulations to them. Uh, we are anticipating almost 40 Hockamock League All-Stars. We definitely are closing in on almost 40 seniors who have committed to play in the NCAA, whether Division I, Division II, Division III, and that's twice the national average for high schools our size. So how about a, another round of applause for these kids right here? Thank you for indulging me in you know, some of our highlights this season. So moving on. In my growing time here as your athletic director, I've had the pleasure of witnessing these young men and women in the audience lead our teams as they battle to succeed in the athletic arena, very similar to the way that we all struggle and battle to succeed in our everyday lives. I have observed the day-to-day -day successes and challenges of our student athletes trying to balance academics, athletics, social life, work, and basically real life in general. I've witnessed many great contests, some tough defeats, many exhilarating W's, and I've also been, loud, I've been a loud and proud spectator at some of the most thrilling and ferocious and even some galactic W's of my 35-year athletic career. And what I have observed and noticed is that these student athletes have learned life lessons and they do possess the characteristics that we hope they would have learned from participating in athletics. They work super hard. They can and do learn from their mistakes they have improved their mental and physical skill sets with practice and repetition. They are dedicated and make sacrifices. They have become resilient in the face of adversity, and they have increased their chances to succeed as they have pursued goals with passion, commitment, and unbridled focus. Above all, 
they have displayed the key component for any and all success in athletics and life in general, which is the relentless and unwavering pursuit of excellence. No matter what the odds or predictions, you must continue to work hard and strive to win, which you all, in my opinion, have demonstrated so well in your careers here representing Scarlet Hawk Nation. And how about another round of applause for these kids, please? We're all here tonight to acknowledge and honor the efforts and accomplishments of our senior student athletes. However, I feel it's important that we recognize them and also acknowledge their critical support networks, which consist mainly of parents, families, and friends who have traveled this long and arduous journey with them. The hours and hours of driving during youth practices and games, weekend practices and games in the hot and cold months, the early morning weekend practices, the amazing W's and the painful losses, and all of the other experiences in, in between. At this point, seniors, what I'd like you to do is give your parents and your families a round of applause for all they do. <laughs> These student athletes, supported by their home teams, their families, have relentlessly pursued excellence in the community, the academic realm, and certainly in the, certainly in the athletic arenas. I'm excited to spend the evening with these young men and women and their comprehensive community of supporters as we collectively celebrate the dedication, hard work, and overall accomplishments of our soon-to-be graduates. Speaking specifically to our seniors, I know Coach Corbin hopefully well enough that I think, I believe he would be proud of your athletic and academic accomplishments throughout the last four years. We are all galactically proud of every single one of you. I think we would want you to continue to grow as students of academia, athletics, and life in general. I believe Coach Corbin would want you to always be strong contributing members of Scarlet Hawk Nation and your general community. And I am certain he would want you to continue to strive for excellence in each and every season as you move forward through the next phases of your lives. In closing, I'd like to quote the great, uh, great Vince Lombardi, one of my favorite coaches, read every book that he's ever written and every book written about him. The spirit, the will to win, and the will to excel are the things that endure. And I hope this is the spirit that we have helped instill in you all as you move on to your next teams, whether that be college, the armed forces, or the workforce. Thank you all for being here with us this evening. Let's rock on, honor our dedicated student athletes, and support teams with some well-deserved recognition, awards, and scholarships. And before I turn it over to another living uh, legend here, Mr. Nick Sakili. I would like to just take a quick picture for Twitter, if you don't mind. <laughs> I got to get that out of the way, so quick, quick check in. Nobody's going to have any fun. Just got one more, one more, real quick. Ready? Got a couple of you. Thank you. Did I go out of order with Nick? Oh, my Lord. Okay. <laughs> So in my preparation of looking at last year's uh, agenda, Nick Sakili, who is a legend in my mind, was here to introduce um, the, our guest speaker. I still think that Special Olympics Hall of Famer Jen Walsh would be appropriate to come up and introduce our next uh, guest. So I apologize for that. That's my boo-boo. Miss Walsh, you are next. I'm sorry. <laughs> a minute there. I thought I got out of speaking. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Jennifer Walsh. I am the local program coordinator for Milford Special Olympics. Tonight, I have the pleasure of introducing our guest speaker. I have known him for many, many years. I first met this young man when he started volunteering for Milford Special Olympics back in 2004 while still in middle school. Our special guest is an alumnus from Milford High School class of 2008, where he excelled both on and off the field. He was a starting linebacker for all four years and a member of the Super Bowl winning team in 2007. He was a 2008 state champ in wrestling at 171 pounds. He then continued on to Assumption College to play football, where he repeated his success and was the class valedictorian in 2012 in the NCAA Division II East Coast Scholar Athlete of the Year. This gentleman continues on sharing all he has learned by teaching math at Natick High, as well as coaching, football, wrestling, track. With all these achievements, what I admire most about him 
Even though he's always extremely busy with all his athletics, academics, teaching, and coaching, he always finds a way to give back. Since 2004, he has volunteered for the Milford Special Olympic programs, where he began as an assistant track and field coach, and now being the head coach for powerlifting and our wrestling teams, as well as the national games coach for the Special Olympic Massachusetts powerlifting team. At every practice and competition, he helps the athletes with intellectual disabilities find their own strengths and abilities. He brings enthusiasm, commitment, and a positive attitude to each practice, event, and competition. He motivates, inspires, and gives our athletes the skills and confidence through sports that they have for a lifetime. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it is my pleasure to introduce my friend, Nick D'Antonio. Mrs. Walsh, thank you very much for that kind introduction. As the former water boy for the Milford High School football team from the mid-1990s to the start of my high school career in 2004, I had the good fortune of becoming intimately familiar with the Milford High School football tradition. As an impressionable youngster, I can remember dreaming of the day when I too would don the famed Scarlet Hawk wings embossed on a glistening white helmet. I aspired to follow in the footsteps of those who came before me and become a fellow member of the Milford High School athletics tradition. A tradition not only full of league and state championships, but a tradition with a rich history of transforming young men and women into upstanding members of society. Though each Milford athlete in his or her own right contributes to the advancement of this tradition, one individual in particular, more than anyone else, fostered an environment that bred athletic and academic excellence, school pride, discipline, and an unwavering sense of commitment to one's team. That individual is Coach Dick Corbin. A member of the Massachusetts High School Football Coaches Association Hall of Fame, Coach Corbin stood for everything that is right in scholastic athletics. Even though he was not an active member of any coaching staff during my time in Milford, he made every effort to continue to support the Milford athletics and academic tradition. I am honored to speak at an event named after a man who helped build Milford athletics from the ground up and who gave so much to build the athletic tradition by which all of us seated here today are bound together. Although I was never personally coached by Dick Corbin, my late father, J.D. Antonio, was, and I believe this connection helped establish my appreciation for the tradition associated with Milford Athletics. Thus, inspired by the teachings and guidance of Coach Corbin and other members of the Milford High School athletic tradition, I would like to speak about two topics here tonight. First, the importance of academic excellence in addition to athletic excellence, and second, the use of one's athletic experiences to overcome adversity. While tonight's ceremony focuses inherently on the athletic successes of our Milford student athletes, we must not lose sight of the meaning and true reality of the first word in the phrase student athlete, namely student. From a personal perspective, I always knew that it was critical to give more effort to my academic studies than to my athletic endeavors. Though my athletic accomplishments were a major component of who I was, I wanted to ensure my academic success more than anything else. During high school, Getting a 98 on Mr. DeFonzo's integral calculus exam was just as meaningful to me as making a sack on the gridiron. And for those of you who have taken calculus, you can relate. Academic success opens doors and affords opportunities that otherwise would not be accessible. Although many have athletic intangibles that allow for them to excel in their particular sports, it is their intellectual capacity that sets them apart. For instance, Many would say that John Urschel, an offensive lineman in the National Football League, has reached the pinnacle of his career by playing professional sports. However, few are aware that he is simultaneously pursuing a doctorate in mathematics from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Even here at Milford High School, 
We are fortunate to have individuals such as Joe Burley, who personify the term student athlete. Though her accomplishments as a standout member of the girls' basketball and lacrosse teams receive, may receive more notoriety, her academic ranking of ninth in her graduating class is what really stands out. As the 2017 Hockamock Student Athlete of the Year, Jill embodies what every student athlete should strive to achieve. Each of you would not be where you are today without the emphasis you placed on being a student first and an athlete second. Now, of course, we all grew up dreaming of playing professional sports and hoping, in hopes of making our, our favorite athletic pastimes become our future careers. Yet, the reality is that your future will be intrinsically tied to your successes as a student. As I am sure many of you can recite from rote memory, the NCAA has a phrase that describes the true importance of academics. Nearly all of us will be going professional in something other than sports. The truth is that your athletic career is finite. Whether you plan to advance your academic careers at the collegiate level, immediately enter the workforce, or join our armed forces, you can count on the fact that you will use what you have learned here today at Milford in your future. Trust me, as a mathematics teacher, one of the most common questions I'm always fielding from students centers on, Mr. D'Antonio, can you tell me when I'm ever gonna use this in my life? While I always enjoy developing a far-fetched response about how quadratic functions model the paths of missiles used by NASA, the reality is that math and other academic disciplines equip you with 21st century problem-solving skills that you will call upon as you grow. As Milford High School alumni, you can trust that you have been prepared with the necessary intellectual and academic skills required to make informed decisions as contributing members of society. Whether determining which healthcare is most beneficial for your family, which retirement account offers the best financial outcome, or which university will afford your children the best future, your academic ability will function as the primary component in each of these decisions. So never sell yourself short in thinking you are only athletes. Nonsense. You are student athletes. Now, being a student athlete also develops the skills needed to handle life's challenges. I am sure that each of you can think of a time during your athletic career when a coach, a mentor, or a parent made some reference to how specific athletic experiences have the unique capacity to teach valuable life lessons. Athletes internalize lessons ranging from learning how to operate as a part of a cohesive unit to discovering that the limits placed on one's physical body are mere barriers meant to be overcome and surpassed, to even identifying that one's true character is forged in the crucible of adversity. Though all of these lessons are inherently valuable, I would like to focus my attention on one ideal in particular, overcoming adversity. Each of us has experienced our own share of adversity at some point during our athletic careers. Speaking from a personal standpoint, while I did have plenty of athletic successes, I was also forced to confront and manage a number of adverse situations as well. However, in reflecting on the role adversity plays in our lives, are wins and losses really the best way to learn from the lessons of adversity? Maybe, but sports have the capacity to teach us so much more about life. When I think about overcoming adversity, I think of Ryan Gray a senior at Milford who, despite having lost his sister in a traumatic car accident, found the inner strength to defy odds and capture a Massachusetts State wrestling title this past season. I think about Anthony Robles, an NCAA Division I wrestling champion from Arizona State, who even though was born with only one leg, found a way to become one of the most acclaimed athletes in his sport. I think about Garrett Holov, a mixed martial arts fighter with Down syndrome who refuses to be defined by his intellectual composition, but rather by the size of his heart and the power of his will. Your athletic experiences have taught you much about overcoming adversity and about being able to manage challenging life situations. Whether such adversity is in the form of a failing grade or being turned down for a desirable job opportunity or addiction or death of a family member, you can always rely on mental toughness and resilience, the lessons you learn during your time as a Milford student athlete. Adversity will always be present in our lives, and your capacity to manage, facilitate, and overcome such challenges will define your true nature. Do not allow yourselves to be defined based on what you are denied in the face of adversity, 
Rather, build your own future on the rock-solid foundation you have developed as a Milford student-athlete and as a member of the Milford High School athletics tradition. On his Wall of Fame plaque located at Natick High School, Coach Dick Corbin included a brief section titled, Advice to Students. As I end here tonight, I would like to leave you with Coach Corbin's inspiring words to future generations of students. Understand the true meaning and importance of making the right decisions. These decisions will involve family, school, friends, and self. Apply positive discipline, positive strong will, and positive hard work to achieve self-actualization. If you have the will, you will find the way to a successful and fulfilling life. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's my great honor to recognize our student athletes who are members of one or more of our Milford High School Honor Societies. Earning membership to an honor society is a great testimony to your academic fortitude, your ability to manage your time and forecast, your academic and athletic expectations is nothing short of remarkable. I am very grateful to each of you our wonderful senior student athletes for creating a powerful and positive school culture that is the pride of our school community. Very special thank you to our parents for your loyalty and support of our academic and athletic programs. I thank the outstanding faculty and staff of Milford High School for their devotion to our student athletes. I thank our Milford High School boosters for all their time and their efforts in planning this very special evening. I thank our coaches for their dedication, their time, and their energy that they give to our student athletes day in and day out. I thank our athletic director, Coach Boucher, for his devotion and his advancement of our athletic programs. And I am especially grateful to honor the memory of Coach Dick Corbin, and I thank the Corbin family for your devotion to Milford High School. It is now my privilege to present to you our senior student athletes who are members of our honor societies. When you hear your name, please stand. Nicholas Antonellis, National Honor Society. Victoria Bayer, National Honor Society, National Spanish Honor Society. Allison Buckenmeyer, National Honor Society. Jillian Burley, National Honor Society. Audrey Bushy, National Honor Society, Tri M Music Honor Society. Hannah Carney, Tri M Music Honor Society. Christina Capone, National Honor Society, tri Music Honor Society. Dylan Chapman, National Art Honor Society. Christopher Sishu, National Honor Society. Brianna Croto, National Art Honor Society. Nicole Dahlgren, National Honor Society. <laughs> Kivan Darwala, National Honor Society. <laughs> Caitlin DeCapua, National Honor Society. <laughs> Elena Della Russo, National Honor Society. <laughs> Jacob Ilya, National Honor Society. <laughs> Megan Farrell, National Honor Society. <laughs> Catherine France, National Honor Society. 
Kristen Franzini, National Honor Society. Ryan Gray, National Honor Society. Julia Gustafson, Tri-M Music Honor Society, National Art Honor Society. Christopher Hart, National Honor Society. Blake Hill, National Honor Society. Evan Keo, Tri-M Music Honor Society. Brett Kimball, National Honor Society. Emma Liskov, National Honor Society, National Spanish Honor Society. Jordan Lombardo, National Honor Society, Tri-M Music Honor Society, National Spanish Honor Society. Molly Macklow, National Honor Society, Tri-M Music Honor Society. Daniel Mendoza, National Honor Society. Morgan Mickelson, National Honor Society, Tri-M Music Honor Society. Sydney Morrison, National Honor Society. Angelina Oliva, National Honor Society. Andrew Palaria, National Honor Society. Marcello Pano, National Honor Society, Tri-M Music Honor Society. Fiona Raleigh, National Honor Society. Hari Raval, National Honor Society, Tri-M Music Honor Society, National Spanish Honor Society. Emma Ryan, National Honor Society, Tri-M Music Honor Society, National Spanish Honor Society. Alex Salamon, National Honor Society. Victoria Scazafava, National Honor Society, National Art Honor Society. Emily Smith, National Art Honor Society. Zach Tamani, National Honor Society. Lauren Tommaso, National Honor Society. Erica Vinaco, National Art Honor Society. Christopher Watson, National Honor Society, Tri-M Music Honor Society. Michael Weber, National Honor Society. Lauren Zorangian, National Honor Society. Congratulations. Thank you. <clears throat> now we're going to start the presentation of the senior gifts. Can you have the first row? Luke Allegretta. Kyle, line them up. A song. I'm not even going to try the last name. <laughs> Nicholas Antonellis. Daniela Orojo. Anthony Arcudi. Thank you. 
Alexandria Atherton. Jackie Abishon. Victoria Beyer. Harrison Bliss. Ian Bacall. Allison Buckenmeyer. Jillian Burley. Riley Bubbs Burns. Audrey Bushing. Caitlin Caffarella. <laughs> Hannah Carney. <laughs> Ethan Campbell. <laughs> Jack Capaletti. Christina Capone. Kevin Cambrola. Dylan Chapman. Christopher Sishu. Cameron A is for Awesome Clock. Allison Collins. Anthony Crisofuli. <laughs> Brianna Croto. <laughs> Nicole Dahlgren. Kelsey De Silva. Nathaniel Davia. Kivon Darawala. Caitlin De Capua. Hold on a minute, Carla threw me a curveball. Elena Della Rosso. <laughs> Taylor Dubay. Jake Ilya. <laughs> Margaret Farrell. <laughs> Sh 
Dante Fester. Kate France. Kristen Franzini. Ryan Gonzo Gonzalez. Kristen Gerard. Alec Gilead. Ryan Gray. Julia Gustafson. Chris Hart. Blake Tadpole Hill. I, I had to. <laughs> Nathan Irwin. Evan Kehoe. Gotcha. <laughs> Nicholas Kidman. <laughs> Brett Kimball. Zach Lind, Sam Little, Emma Liskoff, Jordan Lombardo, Jared Luce. <laughs> Nicholas Laurie. <laughs> Alex Swanee Masick. Molly Maclow, Maclow, Mark Mancuso, thank you. Gustavo Marateo, <laughs> Jessica McIntyre, Danielle Mendoza, <laughs> Daniel, right? Is that what I said? Morgan Mickelson. <laughs> Drew Marisola. <laughs> Tony Mobilia. Noah Montgomery.
Kyla Morgan. Sydney Morrison. Shea Murray. Angelina Oliva. Marcello Pano. Hold on. Andrew Palaria. Christine Pye. David Rabinowitz. Fiona Raleigh. Harmit Ravel. Tyler Renault. Gabrielle Riley. Pernell Robinson. Emma Ryan. Hannah Subornin. Alec Rico Salamone. Pedro Sampeo. Catherine Scozafava. Victoria Scozafava. Jane Shula. Francesca Shippen. Emily Smith. Tabish Saeed. Zach Zidi Tamani. Andrew Terrell. Lauren Tommaso. Brian Fofo Tommaso. Michael Traficanti. Kevin Trong. Benjamin Cesar Biga Tuttle.
Alex Uswanele Jr. Erica Vanaco. Chris Watson. Michael Weber. Jack Winship. Alex Wood. Ali Zagami. Lauren Zarangian. Daniel Zwanek. Stan Demko. Ben Rizzoli. So at this point, what we'll do is we're going to call up our award winners, our scholarship winners. And if you would just come up the main steps right here and preferably exit in front of the podium this way, that would be a little bit more streamlined. So let's start off with the Dr. John V. Gallagher Medal. The recipient is Marcello Pano. John J. DeSalvia Plaque. And the recipient this year is Victoria Beyer. This year's Kim Miller Award goes to Mr. Danny Mendoza. I'm not sure if the Mohans are here. Sometimes they are able to attend and give out the award. I didn't see them before, so we're gonna... Oh, here we are, great, come on up. That would be wonderful, come on up. No? All right, they're here, they're amazing. They, they fund this every year for us, great people. This year's female recipient for the Marilyn and John Mohan Scholarships is Miss Jillian Burley. The male recipient is Mr. Chris Watson. We'll see you a little bit later. <laughs> the John P. Calagione Memorial Scholarship, this year's recipient. Elena Della Russo. Chuck usually presents this, but there's a town meeting and he let me know that he would be there this evening, so we'll give that out. Nice job, Elena. Nice job, Chuck. 
the annual Pass Commander's Memorial Trophy of the Italian-American War Veterans Post number 40. The recipient is Blake Hill. Tony Longo Memorial Trophy recipient, Mr. Ryan Gray. <laughs> Milford High School Coaches Field Hockey Award, the recipient, Miss. Christina Capone. This time I'd like, I'd like to invite Ms. Marin Dolan come up to come up and give out the next two awards. Or present the next two awards. Milford Youth Football Association Scholarship. The recipient, Mr. Jack Capaletti. <laughs> the Milford Youth Cheerleading Association Scholarship. Taylor and I go back about this uh, with her last name. I say Taylor Doobie. Some people say Dubay, but Taylor, come on up. Taylor. Thank you, Marin. Varsity Cheerleading Coaches Scholarship, Ms. Lauren Tommaso. The Milford Hopetail Youth Soccer Association Scholarships, there are three of these. Female recipient, Francesca Shippard. <laughs> Female recipient, Christina Franzini, I'm sorry, Kristen Franzini. Getting ahead of myself. The male recipient, Danny Mendoza. Sorry. Congrats. Joseph Clifford Potty Memorial Scholarship goes to Ryan Tommaso. Milford High School Golf Coaches Award goes to Mr. Anthony Arcudi. Milford High School Basketball Coaches Award. We have two recipients, Mr. Alex Masick. <laughs> Mr. Mike Traficante.
Mary L. Manguso Memorial Scholarship goes to Mr. Zach Tamani. Matt O'Connor Unsung Hero Award goes to Mr. Anthony Arcudi. <laughs> Knew that was coming. <laughs> John A. Tebow Memorial Scholarship, Mr. Ryan Gray. <laughs> Milford Ice Hockey Scholarship Award, Mr. Alec Gilead. Milford High School Swimming Coaches Award, Captain Nick Antonellis. Milford Baseball Umpire Scholarship goes to Anthony Arcudi. Albert Inglesi Memorial Baseball Scholarship, Mr. Zach Tamani. Jeffrey Hemminghofer, Milford High School Baseball Coaches Award. We have three recipients. The first recipient, Mr. Blake Hill. The next recipient, Mr. Tyler Renault. And our third recipient, Mr. Alex Masick. Charlie Stan, Unsung Hero Award, Mr. Kevin Cambrola. <laughs> Milford Girls Fast Pitch Softball League Scholarship. There are two recipients, Miss Allie Atherton <laughs> and Miss Maggie Farrell. Incidentally, we have a couple of awards tonight that might not be in the program. They were late uh, being really built this year. So you, you, we're going to go out of order here in just a couple of awards. So bear with us. Milford High School Boys Volleyball Coaches Award. Two of them. Mr. Jack Winship. And Mr. Danny Zwonick.
Wilfrid High School Girls Volleyball Coaches Award, Ms. Ali Zagami. Milford High School Lacrosse Coaches Awards. We have a male and female recipient, female recipient, Ms. Taylor Doobie. The male award goes to Mr. Harrison Bliss. Milford High School Track and Field Coaches Award, same thing, male and female recipients. Female recipient, Miss Elena Della Russo. Male recipient, Mr. Chris Sissu. Scarlet Hawk Award goes to Mr. Ryan Gray. Maureen O'Brien Cullen, Unsung Hero Heroin Award. We have three recipients this year. The first recipient, Miss Lauren Zarangian. Next recipient, Mr. Brett Kimball. Next recipient, Alex Salamon. Robert P. Vadalato Memorial Scholarship goes to Miss Caitlin DeCapua. John J. Lowney Memorial Scholarship goes to Miss Emma Liskov. Scarlet Hawk Achievement Award, we have a male and female recipient this year. For the boys, Mr. Blake Hill. And for the gals, Ms. Angelina Oliva. And at this time, I would ask Gridiron President Tony Shirelli to come up to give out the Milford Gridiron Scholarship. Good job, bud. Congratulations. And the Milford Gridiron Scholarship goes to Mr. Jack Capaletti.
Milford High School Football Coaches Award goes to Asong Eminmense. some point. Milford High School Girls Tennis Coaches Award. We have two this year. Miss Allison Buckenmeyer and Victoria Beyer. Milford High School, School Booster Club Athletic Scholarships. There are five of those this year. First recipient, Mr. Ben Tuttle. Next awardee is Ms. Lauren Tommaso. Next recipient, Mr. Anthony Arcudi. Next recipient, Ms. Jane Schuler. Next recipient, Mr. Zach Tamani. All right, they made up. That's good. <laughs> We have two Unified Athletes of the Year. Our male recipient, Mr. Ben Rizzoli. And our female recipient, Miss Audrey Bushy. At this time, I would like to ask Joe Stoiko to come up to give out the next award, which is the Joe Stoiko Scholarship Award. And the award recipient is Mr. Marky Mancuso. Another one of our new scholarships, I'm going to ask Richard, Dylan, and Jason to come up to present this. There are two recipients this year. For the Julianne Rizzo Scholarship Award. Recipient number one, Miss Allie Atherton. And our second recipient is Ms. Kristen Franzini.
I'm going to ask Mrs. Banak to come up and present the next award. We have a male and female Hockamock League Scholar Athlete of the Year Award. Our male recipient is Mr. Chris Watson. And our female awardee is Ms. Jillian Burley. For the District C Athletic Director's Award, there's been two changes this year. We've been allowed to give a fall, winter, and spring. However, the recipients must be two sport athletes with a preference of three sport athletes, a heavy emphasis on three sport athletes. So our three females, fall, winter, and spring, Ms. Christina Capone, Ms. Brianna Croto, and Ms. Ali Atherton. Male recipients, Mr. Blake Hill. Mr. Chris Sishu. And Mr. Anthony Arcudi. The Richard C. Corbin Memorial Athletic Scholarship goes to Zach Tamani. And at this time, I would like to invite head soccer coach Jay Maste, head soccer girls coach Jay Maste, up to the podium. He will be presenting our Tony Correa Memorial Scholarship. Thank you, Coach Boucher, and welcome, everyone. When I was asked to present this award, I quickly realized that not growing up in Milford, I knew very little about Mr. Tony Correa. So I did what any parent and coach of a millennial and a student of a millennial would do. I asked Siri. <laughs> Unfortunately, Siri wasn't much help. So I did what any baby boomer would do in a situation like this. I picked up the phone and I made a few calls. To my surprise, I found out that, that our recipient and Mr. Correa had a lot in common. First of all, their love of sports, and especially their love of soccer. It turns out that Mr. Correa was a soccer coach here at Milford High School during the 1970s. I also discovered that Mr. Correa was an athlete, was smart, a natural leader, a hard worker, and a wonderful friend to all who knew him. Certainly all the traits that he shares with today's award recipient, Mr. Cole Dahlgren. Nicole has been a remarkable athlete to coach these last four seasons, and both myself and her coach, T.J. Dolliver, agree that she's the ideal student athlete, captain, and teammate. Nicole is a person who is always striving for more on the field, on the court, and in the classroom. As an athlete, Nicole's list of accomplishments is pretty amazing. She's a four-year varsity soccer player and starter, a four-year varsity basketball player and two-year starter, a two-time soccer MVP in her junior and senior years, a basketball MVP in her junior year, and she was named a Hockamock League Honorable Mention All-Star in both her junior and senior years for both soccer and basketball. 
For student athletes like Nicole, sports are much more than a game. Rather, they are considered physical and mental battles that help to make her a better person. In my coaching experience, it is rare to come across players like Nicole. Almost from the first day that she showed up at tryouts her freshman year, Nicole established herself not only as a good player, but as a leader of our team. For four years, she has been a leader in every sense of the word, supportive of her teammates while also maintaining a sense of accountability for the team. She is a model of consistency and reliability, and she literally has been the team's moral compass for the last four seasons. Her leadership will be greatly missed. Off the field and off the court, Nicole is delivered in the classroom. Nicole ranks number 33 in her class. She sports a healthy 3.7 grade point average. She's a member of the National Honor Society, and she'll be attending Merrimack College in the fall to pursue a degree in business. Nicole's skill and dedication on the athletic stage are equally matched with her desire to help others. As a community leader, Nicole has always looked to give back through the use of her time and talents. Her energy to improve her community are seen in the following activities. A youth basketball and soccer referee, a unified track participant, a fundraiser for breast cancer awareness, and a peer mentor. All of her accomplishments are even more amazing when you consider that for most of this time, she did it holding down a part-time job of 20 plus hours per week. Nicole's passion, dedication, hard work, and motivation are what made her shine on the field, on the court, and in the community. Her legacy is embedded, has been embedded in both girls' soccer and the girls' basketball programs here at Milford High School, and her love of both sports and her outstanding efforts will continue to be seen throughout her teammates, the individuals that she mentored, and all the youth soccer and basketball players who continue to look up to her. From what little, time, what, from what little I know of the late Mr. Korea, I'm sure that they would be very proud of this, female, this year's female recipient. So it is with great pride and pleasure that I award the 2017 Tony Career Award to Ms. Nicole Dahlgren. For the Boys Tony Korea Memorial Coaches Award, we are asking head wrestling coach PJ Basha to come to the podium, please. The Tony Korea Memorial Coaches Award goes to a student athlete that displays sound character, good academics, ties to the community, and his overall positive role model for the MHS student athletes. I was lucky to have coached this athlete for four years, as he has had a tremendous impact on the wrestling team, the football program, his teammates, family, community, and especially me as a coach. He was a four-year starter on varsity, but wins didn't come easy at first. He put in his time, energy, hard work, in season as well as off season to reach his individual and team goals. He is outworked by no one. He was a three-year starter in football, and Coach Todd described him as a coach on the field and a captain of the captains. He said he has an unconditional respect for everyone, and his teammates loved him for that, and I couldn't agree more. In today's world, we hear a lot about individualistic goals and accomplishments, but not from this athlete. He put the team first. He was a leader in and out of the wrestling room every day. I believe one of the greatest compliments you can give an athlete today is to say that they are coachable. He is a great example of that. His hard work definitely paid off. In wrestling, he had an overall record of 119 wins and 49 losses. 44 and six as a senior. He was a member of the 100 win club, Hockamock League All-Star, Milford tournament champ, Hockamock tournament champ, sectional champ, voted most dedicated twice by his teammates. Senior season, voted MVP. He was voted captain both junior and senior season. In football, he was a three-year starter, started both ways as senior, was rookie of the year, most dedicated, and also voted captain of the football team. Ryan Gray proved to me what type of athlete he was late in the year uh, when he helped his team uh, battle a very tough Beverly team by wrestling sick. The outcome of the match wasn't uh, what we really wanted. He lost a very close match in overtime. 
Um, but Ryan would get his revenge in a dominant fashion, defeating the same opponent from Beverly in the Division II state finals. He became a member of a very elite uh, group when he became the 195-pound state champion. Ryan will be continuing his wrestling success at Springfield College next year. But this is not the reason why Ryan is getting this award. He is generally a good person. Ryan would do whatever was in his power to help someone in need. He volunteers for Special Olympics Wrestling, is an officer in Best Buddies, volunteers at his church. He's a two-year member of the MIAA Student Advisory Committee, just to name a few. He enjoys giving back to the community of Milford, and I think uh, he would be the first to tell you his family deserves a lot of that credit for raising a well-respected young man. Ryan stood tall this year after his family suffered a tragic loss. He showed leadership, courage, dependability, commitment, gratitude, and I'm not quite sure how he did it. He's beyond his years in maturity, and he's a true role model. I know my two boys look up to him, as well as many other youth wrestlers and athletes in Milford. It has been an honor and a privilege to coach him throughout his high school career. This year's Tony Career Memorial Coaches Award goes to Ryan Gray. Excuse me, I, I just need to apologize. Um, there was one oversight. There was a student athlete that we missed. Um, I would like to have Stephanie Shirelli come to the stage. Stephanie Shirelli was a volley, is a volleyball player going on to the University of Connecticut to study biomedical engineering and was also a student athlete and a member of the National Honor Society. <laughs> Stephanie. So Mr. Lynch was just explaining that uh, I missed the fact that he is also retiring, which means I'm going to have to start an adoption program for some of these parents that have been so helpful. They're going to have to adopt freshmen. Um, so he's been fantastic in my three years here. Uh, you've done just about every job that I can possibly think of. How about a round of applause for this guy? I don't think we're letting him go, but... <laughs> he almost got that one by me. So we have a new award this year. I want to thank a couple of folks, a bunch of people actually. Um, for old guys like me, being a three-sport athlete was just something that you did. You didn't have the internet, you didn't have the cell phones, you weren't as busy. So it really, to be perfectly honest, wasn't as difficult to be a three-sport athlete. Yes, we had part-time jobs, but we didn't have the, I think the academic rigor has increased and increased and increased. You know, being a former health teacher, I, will, I can tell you that the data says that kids go to bed later, get up earlier because they're trying to do so much. And the fact that we have um, a growing number of what we are referring to as Iron Hawk three sport athletes now is something that we're super proud of. Um, as I read the list, you will notice that each grade gets larger and larger. And, and please, many of you have nicknames with me, and um, I'm probably going to hack up some last names here. I'll do my absolute best. However, we're going to do this a little bit differently. Um, before I call the seniors, I want to thank Miss Amy Croto. She worked with Julianne Rizzo uh, very, very closely um, to put this together. And, and they worked side by side and, and really sifting through, you know, seven, eight hundred names. So if we made mistakes, I, I, I promise you we'll try to make up for that. Um, but how about a quick round of applause for Miss Rizzo and, and Amy Croto? I want to thank freshman Jessica Stansberry because she swung in 
and check the list over along with Allie Atherton, who was my intern this year. They did a phenomenal job as student athletes looking through things and picking and trying to make sure that we had it right. So thank you to them, uh, you know, certainly for all their hours of hard work. We appreciate that. Um, and I want to thank the boosters because when I started this evening, I said that Milford, you know, expects and supports excellence. And this is what I'm talking about. Not every other school would do this. This, By the time we're done tonight, there's a lot of shirts we're going to give out. There's a, a bunch of um, fleeces and whatnot. And that's expensive. The boosters didn't bat an eye. They said, if, if you think this is important, we think it's important. They agreed with me. And it took us, you know, a couple of months to put it together. But this is something that we plan on doing for the foreseeable future. So what we're going to do with our seniors, okay, we're going to ask our seniors to come up and stand on the stage as we give you the gifts. And if you want to show everybody the gifts, I would, because I think they're cool. I wish I had one. Um, so just, I'm going to call you all at once. We can basically celebrate all 10 of you when you get up here, and then we'll give them their gifts. President Arcuni, sound good? Anthony Arcudi. <laughs> Christina Capone. Come on up, please. These are three sport athletes. Chris Sissue. Brianna Croto, <laughs> Kivan Darwala. I still have trouble with Kivan's last name. <laughs> he knows it. Elena Della Russo, <laughs> Taylor Duby, <laughs> Jordan Lombardo, <laughs> Jared Luce. And Marcello Pano, come on up, please. These are our senior Iron Hawk athletes. Maybe could one of you just show them the uh, your gift? Chris, what do we what do we got? Or we'll take that little pullover. Hope there's an extra one. <laughs> Congratulations, our senior Iron Hawk athletes. You guys can head back and watch the show. <laughs> Thank you, guys and gals. Okay, so at this point, we're going to call our juniors, sophomores, and freshmen in that order. I'm going to do my absolute best. I do not have my reading glasses. Those were new from a couple days ago. So I'm going to do my best, I promise you. So as we call you, stand up. Please remain standing. And I apologize if I mix up any last names. Is that okay? Yeah, no, you're doing good. I thought we had an inter you know, just a intermediate there. So Chase Blanchett, Amelia Bontempo, Patrick Brajoli, we're standing and remaining standing, please. Gabriella Chong. Kiara Ferraris. Nathaniel Hale. Jack Khalil. Leanne Kibbe. Alexa Lancisi. Lancisi, yeah, I always have trouble with that one, too. Rachel LeBlanc. Connor Meyer. Devin Manning. Hannah Martin. Paul Pardo Cota. And Julie Rabinowitz, we're going to remain standing. Thank you, guys. Thank you, ladies. Remain standing, please. Christopher Berthrong, Lily Borst, this is our class of 2019. Zach Brown, he's got his own cheering back there, cheering section. Riley Campbell, Ariana Cavino, Diana Della Russo. Anthony DeStoro, Catherine Donahue, Jackie Aaliyah, Emily Haley, Ryan Hazard, who's up front with us here, Caden Kelly, Ryan Kelly. Caden got mixed up with his class, it's okay. <laughs> Lucy Kincaid, Josh Lagore, Riley Lynch. Joey Madden, Caitlin Manning, Caitlin O'Connor, Brendan O'Shaughnessy, Gianni Pano, 
Ayush Patel, Christielli Prado, Cassandra Probert, Madeline Richard, Samantha Rudin, Savannah Rosado, Matt Shaver, Piper Terrell, Lillian Tebow, Miguel Torres, Sarah Weber, the soccer has their own cheering section back there, I like that, and Brendan White. We're standing and remaining standing, thank you. It's a lot of people right now, I like that. Okay, here's the class of 2020. Again, increasing in numbers. Alexa Agnew, Caitlin Baglioni, Elizabeth Baza, Liam Bennett, Elena Bontempo, Leah Kasman, Christina Shirelli, Sarah Comiskey, David Coplin, Bruna Costa, Kiara Catino, Rashad Darwala, Nayara De Silva, Isabella De Souza, Rafael Feliciano, Anthony Galbuni, Gabriela Gonzalez, Megan Hart, Julia Kidman, Jason Lucini, Edward Madden, Max Manor, Alexis Marcolini, Olivia Marshall, Tatiana Martinez, Victoria Monica, Allison Nesta, Gabrielle Pardo Coda, Colby Pyers. I'm just going to go with Michelle P. Michelle, I'm not going to try that last name. I've had trouble all year. Abigail Reichert. <laughs> Leah Richardson. Katie Schuler. Amelia Skiba. Jessica Stansberry. Catherine Watson. Alyssa Williamson. And Nick Wimette. So those are our junior, sophomore, freshman Ironhawks. And what we're going to do, folks, there are so many of you. Well, at the end of the evening, when we disperse, okay, when the night is over, we're going to meet you in the, um, in the teacher's cafeteria. And we also have some gifts from the boosters for you. But we thank you for all three seasons. It's pretty darn impressive. Senior, junior, sophomore, freshman. Thank you. I'm going to turn it back over to President Arcudi. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I need to take a few moments to thank some people who have made this evening possible and have been very supportive to the Boosters Club. First, I would like to thank the class of 2017 for all your efforts, hard work in representing our community, in Milford High School. We are all proud of, your, proud of your achievements, but we are most proud of your ability to remain diligent with your studies and becoming graduates of Milford High School. I'd like to thank my Booster Club family, what I call, who I call the Fun Bunch. Our Vice President Chris Lynch, who is following me in retirement, our Treasurer Joanne Dillon, our Secretary Gina Tommaso, also Nicole Shula and Tom Williamson. These people have put in a tremendous amount of time and energy and I can't thank them enough for their contribution and their support. Also a thank you to our core group of parents that were always, that were always there to help and pitch in. Thank you very much. A special thanks goes to Joanne Dillon, Nicole Shula, and Carla Tuttle. These are the co-chairs for this evening's event and the volunteers that put this event, fantastic event together. And Kyra Alves, who was working on the PowerPoint presentation, thank you very much.
But as stated earlier in the night, um, someone who else who's off, uh, who is retiring, Carla Tuttle, thank you very much for everything you've done. You've been there for us. Every youth team that I coached that I had collar on, we may not have played well, but we ate well. Kyla, thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> I want to thank the uh, I want to thank Superintendent McIntyre and his administration. <clears throat> I'd like to thank Principal Banark and her administration, Athletic Director Peter Boucher, and all the coaches here at Milford High School. Thank you all for welcoming the efforts of the Boosters Club. It has been a pleasure working with all of you. This night could not be possible without the community support and the generosity of the scholarship and award sponsors. Thank you for your continued support of our student athletes. I would also like to take this opportunity to mention that the Iron Hawk t-shirts were donated by the Embroidery Bar. Thank you very much for your support of our student athletes. <laughs> to the Corbin family, for your continued support, for sharing Coach Corbin with us, and for allowing us to honor him in this, in this way. Thank you. <clears throat> Last but not least, for those, who've, for those who have served on committees, you know how much time it can take up and how it sometimes pulls you from your family. Between baseball, coaching baseball, basketball, and the boosters, it's been a fun 17 plus years. But there's one person that deserves a big thank you. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my wife, Wendy Arcudi, for her patience and her understanding over the past years. I love you very much. You're the best. Okay, athletes, now it's your turn. Would you all please stand up? Now I would like you to turn around and face the audience. Seated before you tonight are your parents, your grandparents, your families, your coaches, your teachers, your friends. These are people that have been your biggest supporters and at times maybe even your worst critics, but always your greatest fans. Please show them how much their love and support has meant to you throughout these years with a loud round of applause. You may be seated. To the class of 2017 again, congratulations on your achievements and enjoy the rest of your senior year activities. The next two weeks are gonna be very exciting starting with your prom, then followed by senior week events, and then eventually graduation day and graduation parties. When I say this, believe me, I speak for every senior parent here tonight, and the teachers and the administrators that have been with you for the past four years. Please, please, Please be smart and make good decisions. We all love you very much, 
and we just want you to be safe. Thank you. Now, if you could all remain seated as the seniors proceed out of the hall. Like um, Coach Boucher said, at the end there are refreshments out in the hallway. But again, thank you very much.